<clears throat> that was great. So the promise of electric vehicles is great, but the, re the reality is that electric vehicles are not going to replace the gasoline-powered vehicles anytime soon. Take, for example, in the United States alone, there are 115,000 gas stations, and they're not going away anytime soon either. So hybrid vehicles are increasingly popular and continue to grow as a viable solution. Now, I don't own a hybrid vehicle myself. In fact, I'm not sure they're even allowed here in Texas. <laughs> Seems like every time I rent a car, uh, that's what I get. So General Motors has partnered with the Department of Energy to sponsor the Eco Car Challenge to inspire student teams to do engineering and enhance the performance and fuel efficiency of hybrid vehicles. The Eco Car is a three-year competition challenging students from 16 universities to go head-to-head -head with industry to create more fuel-efficient cars. Let's check it out. The year two is probably our highest pressure part of the competition. They can see how they perform on acceleration and braking and emissions and energy consumption. So over the next few days, we'll be testing on the test track. We're putting our portable emissions measurement systems in um, each of these vehicles. We're looking to do our on-road safety tests, our acceleration, our braking tests, and we'll be uh, testing our brakes. It stops, but it stops quick, too. Our zero to 60 time should be about seven seconds. Uh, we have a parallel hybrid electric vehicle, and uh, this car will definitely do much better in your, in your city-type driving. The EcoCar student team vehicles will go through the same kinds of tests that we put our own production vehicles through at General Motors. It's past the on-road safety, the braking, and the lane change. These teams are facing real-world problems. They're no longer you know, solving textbook problems with answers in the back of the book. And this guy's yeah, not going to come off. Most importantly, the students get an opportunity to work on a real vehicle in a real vehicle testing environment. And this is the only competition that does that. You learn a lot about not only the design process, but also designing for integration and serviceability. They designed this competition to model the, the process that GM uses to design a vehicle. When they start in the automotive industry, they are three to five years ahead of any of their colleagues. From the hybrid electric vehicle team of Virginia Tech, please welcome Lynn Gant and Michael Kearney. Baby, you can drive my car. Yes, I'm gonna be a star. Baby, Good morning. The EcoCar Challenge has three primary goals. The first of which is to reduce petroleum energy use, along with reducing greenhouse gas emissions, with a focus on maintaining consumer acceptability. Now, in year one of our competition, we were tasked with selecting a hybrid vehicle architecture along with developing our own control strategy. And then we got the chance in year two to actually implement this control strategy onto a prototype vehicle that we built and completed last May. Year three, which will actually start up for us in about two weeks, will actually work on refining that prototype vehicle to have a larger electric only range while continuing to improve our total fuel economy. Now at Virginia Tech, one of the neat, unique things about this particular vehicle program is that we actually treat it as a senior design project. So each year a new group of 25 senior undergraduate mechanical engineering students comes in and they spend their fall semester doing software training and learning about how hybrid vehicles work and then they actually get to build, design and refine a hybrid vehicle in their fall semester. So they actually get to implement what they learned in the classroom on a real vehicle. So in order to explain a little bit more about how our vehicle works, we have two primary states of operation. The first is charge depleting. We actually use stored grid electricity into a lithium iron phosphate battery pack to propel an electric motor mounted on the rear axle for the first 40 plus miles of full performance. Now after that, we actually use a flex fuel engine burning E85 ethanol. So what that means is that we're actually using that E85 to propel the front axle of our vehicle. Now, e, between using E85 and grid electricity, we're actually able to reduce the petroleum energy used on board our vehicle by over 90% compared to the vehicle we received by General Motors. Now, the main goal of a hybrid vehicle is to keep the total system efficiency high. And one other way that we do this is through the use of a small electric motor belted into the engine path. We call this a belted alternator starter. This allows us to completely eliminate idle fuel use, so when your vehicle stops at a stoplight, we'll actually shut the engine off. And also, we're actually able to generate some electricity when the engine isn't operating as efficiently and store that into a battery pack. 
This is a similar tactic that's known as regenerative braking, where we actually use the electric motor mounted on the rear axle to slow the vehicle down instead of using the friction brakes. So we actually generate electricity and store it for later use. The final mode that I wanted to talk about is our performance mode. Since we do have two very large propulsion systems, we can actually use them in tandem using the electric motor on the rear and the flex fuel engine on the front to propel the vehicle. And when we're in this mode, we can go from zero to 60 miles an hour in just over 10 seconds. This is about two seconds quicker than the stock vehicle we receive from General Motors. So as you can see, we have a lot going on in our vehicle. It's a very complex system. And to explain how we control our vehicle, I'll turn it over to Mike. Thanks, Lynn. All right, as Lynn said, and as you can see, we have a very complex architecture. And in order for a very complex architecture to work, we need to have a complex control strategy that can control all the subsystems on our vehicle. To do that, we use a hybrid vehicle supervisory controller, which is a compact Rio running a LabVIEW-based control strategy that our team has developed. It interfaces with all the major subsystems that Lynn described, including our GM engine and transmission and other systems, the two motors we added to the front and to the rear, and of course, our high-voltage battery pack that gives our 40-plus miles of electric range. Additionally, with the driver display up front, we're able to provide real-time information to the driver regarding the status of the vehicle. We were also able to control pumps and fans for thermal management on demand, as well as reading sensors for things like temperature and electric current. Now, with the complex control strategy, we need a way to test the controller outside the vehicle. To do that, we use controller hardware in the loop. What that does is allows us to interface our compact Rio controller with a mathematical real-time model of our vehicle. This creates the same closed-loop interactions that we would see inside of our vehicle, where the controller can send commands to the model, but the model can also send feedback right back into the controller. Now, this has a lot of benefits for our team. First of all, we're able to develop and validate a controller long before we ever had a running, integrated vehicle, which is very helpful to us being successful. Additionally, if you're using an Ivera stand, we're to actually simulate faults in the model that we can never simulate in the actual vehicle. By doing this, we can create a robust fault mitigation strategy so that if something happens on the vehicle, we can protect our components, protect our occupants, and also stay on the road operable. We can't score points of competition or get where we need to go if we have a vehicle sitting on the side of the road. For example, our high voltage battery pack was donated to us. It costs about $100,000. When we place a controller in our vehicle, we need to be absolutely sure, 100%, that it'll behave just as we expect in order to protect the component, protect our team when we're in the vehicle, and to score as points in competition. Now, the demo we'll do for you today is a little short, but if you look at the table, this is our controller hardware in the loop setup. The white box is our PXI chassis running the actual mathematical vehicle model, and the other smaller box is a compact Rio, which runs our control strategy. This is the same controller you would find in the rear of our vehicle controlling our subsystems. And the laptop that Lynn is using allows us to interface with the model to control the inputs into it, and also be able to view the response of those. So Lynn, would you mind going and starting our car for us? Sure. We gotta take a little trip. All right, you'll notice that you have to do the same things in this model as you would have to start our actual vehicle. It's representative of what we actually have to do. So you'll notice that it'll go directly in charge of pleading state. That's our 40 plus miles of electric range. Our vehicle decides what state to go into based on a state chart, a state chart architecture that looks at various vehicle parameters to determine what state is best given things like the charge level of the battery. So Lynn, you want to deplete our remaining electric range? Sure. By using HIL, we're able to quickly create different testing situations such as changing the charge level of the battery directly in the model. So you'll see that we transition the charge sustaining at the proper time, which is very helpful in the operation of our vehicle. And Lynn, would you mind showing the diagnostic page? Now, unlike the first page, this is more oriented to an engineer or developer, so we can rapidly prototype our vehicle. But you'll see that it says it has reduced vehicle performance or functionality. That means that our controller recognized that at a very low state of charge of our battery, where we could actually damage the internal chemistry of our battery permanently, our controller recognized that, took action, but our vehicle is still operational and on the road. So, Lynn, you want to go and park our car for us? Yep. Right. Hardware and loop and our other methods have helped us be extremely successful in year two of the competition. We look really look forward to getting started here in two weeks to be successful in year three as well. That's great. Thanks, guys. I think these guys use just about every product we make to pull this off. Now, I need to, uh, I got to brag on, I got to brag on these guys. So, we just finished uh, year two of the three-year competition. Uh, they took eight of a possible 42 uh, awards uh, in the competition, and uh, of course they won the Excellence Award for a graphical system design that's awarded by National Instruments. So good luck in year three, guys. Thank you.